Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibe for all you. You understand what I'm saying, Ting? And this one here, somebody requested it and uh, I, I had it on there to, to, to watch it and Ting and I just, you know what I mean? I apologize. Here it is St. Vincent. It's the island right next to my island. It's a sister island, we call them, pretty much. Uh, they're part of the Windward Islands, which is Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and Dominica. This one is St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know what I mean, and thing. So this is my area on the scene here. This is my area. And uh, also, I'm working on this camera thing here, you know, trying to figure it out. So I did a, somebody told me, and I want to thank the dude for telling me about my frame rate and stuff like that. If stuff don't look too good, let me know because I'm learning as I go along and thing. You know what I mean? I'm, especially with the camera stuff and all of that. And I could edit and stuff a little bit, but you know, the camera stuff is that uh, I'm learning all of that lighting and framing and the shutter speed and all of that stuff. So hopefully it gets better for you. No, no, not hopefully. It will get better. You'll get good crisp you know, vibe. So I, I did the, the frame rate a little different. So let's see what happened with that. But I'm babbling. Let's get into the video. I just wanted to explain that to you. Let's get into this Bumble Cloud video and think. Yeah, Bumble Cloud video. You know what I mean? This one is called Geography Now, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. I've babbled enough. Now, I'm going to admit, before visiting, I knew little to nothing about St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So naturally, when I visited, you guys got me drunk on what is essentially illegal rum so strong it could light up a barbecue. You also made me eat whale blubber and took a picture of me in a pirate hat. You, you know, uh, on the island, at least on my island, we call moonshine Mountain Dew. <laughs> so when I first came here and uh, I was dating my, my now ex-wife, she sent me to, at the time she was my girlfriend, uh, she sent me to get Mountain Dew, and I'm like, this uh, moonshine in the stores here? <laughs> because that's what we call it. We never call it moonshine, we just call it Mountain Dew. That's what you got drunk on, bruh. That Vincey stuff will bust you up. I like you. I like you guys. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. We have reached the last and final brother of the Caribbean triplets, the Saint Countries. We've done Saint Kitts, we've done Saint Lucia, and now the end is here, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. What about Saint Bonaventure? And huge thanks to the Saint Vincent and Grenadine huh? Tourism Authority and Geography of Gordon for hooking up an entire experience showing me as much as you could in two days. This is a country that definitely has interesting people and backstory. If there was a pan-Caribbean party going on, you know, Jamaica would obviously be the DJ, Barbados would be passing out the drinks, little quiet Dominica would be reading a book in the corner, but the real fun wouldn't start until crazy Uncle Vinny pops in. He's got the best hookups and everybody wants to talk to him and his crew. Welcome to the cool uncle of the Caribbean. <laughs> Well, that's new to me. The original name of the country oh. was Hyrun, which means <laughs> land of the blessed. See, in the Caribbean, you're either in the single main island club, the double island club, and then you get to St. Vincent and it's like, oh, you've got a crew. Maybe two islands and a few small rocks off your coast. That's uh, that's cute. Well, say hello to my 32 sidekicks. Not to ban ya. Oh, jeez, Vincent, that is the creepiest visual effect you've ever made on Geography Now. Why would you make that? Well, you told me to be creative. Anyway, to the globe. St. Vincent and the Grenadines are located in the Caribbean, just at the southern tip of the Windward Island chain, which is part of the Lesser Antilles, which is basically all the small islands east of Puerto Rico. The country is made up of St. Vincent, the main island, at about 88% of the landmass, where around 90% of the population lives. The remaining 12% is made up of the Grenadine Islands, an archipelago of smaller islands and islets shared between St. Vincent and Grenada, most of which, though, 32 to be exact, belong to St. Vincent, about two-thirds of the entire Grenadine Island chain. Eight of these islands are inhabited or partially inhabited. St. Vincent's Grenadine Islands extend from what is considered to be the very first of the Grenadine Islands, Young Island, only about 200 yards from St. Vincent's mainland, all the way south to the furthest island, Petite St. Vincent, which sits only about a mile away from Petite Martinique, which is the northernmost island of Grenada's Grenadine Islands. The country is divided into six Minta parishes, Petit five on St. Vincent Island, and the Grenadines all within themselves make up the last and final parish. When you go to St. Vincent, everyone will say the island 
island is shaped like a left hand, and the locations of towns and sites are always usually referred to being either on the windward side, or the Atlantic coast, or the leeward side, being the Caribbean coast. The capital and largest city is found on the south leeward side, Kingstown, not to be confused with Kingston, which is Jamaica's capital, Kingstown, whereas Kingstown. the next largest towns are Georgetown you know, and the north windward side. When I, was, when I was first learning geography, I got that mixed up all the time. And of course, they have a Georgetown, and then Guyana's capital is Georgetown. And Barley in the mid leeward side. The country has only one main international airport on St. Vincent Island, Argyle International. From there, the country has four other regional and private airports Beckway, Mystique, Kanawan, and Union Island. Back to St. Vincent, though, the largest commercial harbor, of course, is in Kingstown, where luxury cruise lines dock and you can catch ferries to the main inhabited Grenadine Islands. However, the largest cargo shipping harbor is just a skip away in Camden Park Industrial Zone. There are two main highways the Leeward Highway that ends in Wallaboo, and the Windward Highway that ends roughly in New Sandy Bay Village. However, you can take a rougher local road all the way to the town of Fancy, the northernmost point of the country. From there, there are no roads that connect the entire uninhabited northwest quarter of the country between the two towns. The government has considered maybe building a road, but too many variables are at play, and if a potential volcanic eruption should occur, it is likely that this area would be in the path of destruction. Yep. And so that's about it. All you need to know about the social... The volcano there is called Sofer, and actually right now it's... Uh rising a little bit the little, there's a new little cone shaped thing coming up in the middle of everything i don't know what they call those but i remember one year when i was a teenager i think it was uh so far erupted and we could see the ash from it in grenada structure of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Wait, you lied. I'm looking at the satellite view and it looks like there's another airport on St. Vincent Island. You forgot about it. Yes, there is, but that one is not functional. That is the former E.T. Joshua International Airport that used to service the country. It was closed down because it was not large enough to accommodate the high demand for visitors and long-haul commercial 737 airlines. Prior to that, getting into St. Vincent was much more limited. It was like, oh yeah, we're typical lame tourists from the USA and Canada and we want to go to St. Vincent. Oh, but alas, there are no direct flights to their small airport. We have to stop in like Barbados or St. Lucia for the first layover. To be funny, that's how I got here. We had a small airport that, well, actually, no. We had, that was one of the few, I flew out on the brand new airport. My mom flew out on the smaller airport called Pearl's Airport. And it's kind of parallel to this. That's why I'm telling you this story. Uh, but back then, you have to have connecting flights because nothing was coming straight there, so I had to stop off in Barbados and here and there before I even get to Miami. You know what I mean? So uh, the Pearls Airport is just sitting there. There's a lot of uh, old airports, airplanes and stuff sitting there. That's on Grenada. But we're talking St. Vincent. Let's keep going with St. Vincent. Now just, just a little tidbit story there. Holy cow, these countries are amazing. It totally has my attention. Let's divert most of our time and money in these places since we are already here. Okay, that is it. I am literally going to demolish an entire town, build an international airport using half of my nation's GDP. Worth it! And now they can take in the demand for trips up to 1.5 million passengers a year, four times more than E.T. Joshua. If you visit, make sure you visit at least one of the Grenadine Islands. Keep in mind, many of the Grenadine Islands are either luxury resorts or privately owned and access is limited to a certain degree to outsiders. We don't have time to explain everything about every single island or key in the Grenadines, but if you want the incredibly condensed rundown Beckway yes pronounced Beckway it is Beckway. the largest and most populated Grenadine Island at about 6,000 people they even have their own flag that alludes to the whaling industry that they are famous for Mustique the millionaires island privately owned by the British Mustique company and it even has a small village for the citizens Kanawan the billionaires island privately owned by the Bahamian Kanawan resort development company this is where the stupidly rich people go to avoid the annoying millionaires Union Island is like the place where the actual people from St. Vincent go to have a getaway down to earth vibe with people that celebrate their own festivals and traditions that's kind of like what Pretty the smallest is to permanently inhabited island the main town everyone lives in doesn't even have an official name and there's a small resort in salt whistle bay and my is technically part of the tobago keys which is a marine park uninhabited but totally popular for some of the best diving spots all of palm island was leased for one dollar a year by an american couple as long as they agreed to build a resort and employ the locals petite saint vincent the southernmost island is privately owned by the u.s freedom resorts company it has 22 Balinese inspired luxury 
concrete cottages. Natoya and Balasso are uninhabited, dry, shrubby islands that hold a dark and important historical place in the nation's history. And Petite Mystique has a funny story about a dude that got caught in a real estate fraud scam. Then you have the smaller empty islands with pretty much nothing on them. And so yeah, that's just about it for all the Grenadine Island clusters. If you decide to visit, here are some of the top spots you might want to consider checking out. These forts, the man-made Happy Island. There are 18 petroglyph sites, the most famous ones probably being in Connery and Leu. Wallabu Heritage Park, Orange Hill Biotechnology Center, the Iron Man statue, Kingstown Market, Black Point Recreational Park and Tunnel. Wallabu Bay is basically where Port Royal from Pirates of the Caribbean was filmed. And you can also see the hanging arch there as well. Mopion Island, which has just a single thatched umbrella on it. And probably the top site of the entire country, the Botanical Gardens. We got one of those in Grenada too. And that's the thing about St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They bank a lot of their tourism on nature and they take conservation pretty seriously. Let's discuss more of that in... Let's do, let's do. When you enter St. Vincent, you'll notice that the country is noticeably greener and lush compared to more commercialized, bustling Caribbean nations. I mean, their tourism motto is St. Vincent, the Caribbean you're looking for. And it's no wonder. I mean, not far from the airport, you have the most pristine black volcanic sand beaches. First of all, the country sits on the Antillean Arc, a volcanic ridge that essentially created all of the Lesser Antilles Islands in the Caribbean. This means that the main island of St. Vincent is also volcanic, with the tallest peak, Soufre, being a stratovolcano that last erupted in 1979. The year of independence. See? Oddly enough, I was a the teenager country has no then. main natural inland bodies of water, but the largest thing close to one would probably be the crater lake in Soufre's caldera. From there, a small mountain spine runs along the island north to south, which collects enough water to create a wide network of streams and small rivers, including the longest one that empties into the Atlantic, the Colinari River. Just south of the river lies the Mesopotamia Valley, known as the breadbasket of the country. This is where the heaviest concentration of agriculture can be found, mostly in fruits and root vegetables. Vegetables. When we go to the south, to the Grenadines, though, a lot of root vegetables done that way. Because of their size, topography, and location, the Grenadine Islands do not have any permanent streams or bodies of fresh water and are generally drier than St. Vincent. Cacti and shrubs are more commonly seen growing in these areas as well. Nonetheless, the convergence of cooler, rougher Atlantic jet streams mixed with the warmer, calmer Caribbean air fronts causes the underwater biosphere to mix elements of both seas and flourish in a myriad of unique, colorful reefs and marine wildlife hotspots. Spots. Yeah, basically, if you want a rainforest, stay on St. Vincent. If you want snorkeling, go to the Grenadines. And if you want to just chill at a cafe, try some of that really interesting sea moss tea. Ooh, oh, listen, actually, man. That that stuff is actually listen, my brother. That sea moss thing. <laughs> oh, I used to make that all the damn time, boy. Ooh, -wee. You know what I mean? We didn't have blenders. Swizzle it up and take it all the bead and... Man, that stuff is good. I haven't drank that in so long. It's said to be an aphrodisiac too, but you know, <laughs> I was young when I was drinking it and uh, I was unfettered, so I don't know. But still, sea moss, damn, that sucker is good. Drop a little bit of rum in there. Mm -mm -mm. Aphrodisiac, so maybe if you're feeling freaky, drink that stuff. Well, you know me with drinks. All I, I, I drank that all the time drink, when I was a kid. No, it comes Didn't in do for nothing this for me. And there he is. Get a little bit of one of these, you know? You're not black, you don't have to worry about getting your hairlines all straight. Now, Miscentions have always been an industrious people, but essentially it comes down to three industries that drive the country's economy. Seasonal agriculture, tourism, and construction services. Agriculture makes up about 7% of the GDP, and today St. Vincent in the Grenadines is the leading producer of arrowroot and arrowroot flour on Earth. Funny enough, as it has been decriminalized, St. Vincent is also known widely throughout the cannabis world for having some of the highest grade marijuana. What? As Vinci weed or Vinci ganja. Ooh, Vinci bubble <laughs> to me. Am I supposed to say something? Huh? Speaking of which, one problem many of the Grenadine Islands face is the demand for fresh water supply. Other than the luxury islands like Mustique and Kenuan, who have desalinization plants for a consistent water source, most island communities in the Grenadines rely entirely within rainwater collection for fresh water and solar heaters installed on their roofs for hot water. Once the reservoir runs out, there's only two options. Ah. Uh. Well, I'm done. The wells are all dry. It's not raining much. I'm all out of fresh water. Sorry to hear that, buddy. What do I do? Well, you could celebrate the Maroon Festival, or the bigger islands can either sell you water bottles, or they can ferry a water truck over to restock your supply for a fee. So, to sustain our country's outskirt areas, you make the residents pay that for the supplies know. when they need it? Yeah, pretty much. It's not an uncommon practice. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Anyway, a long time ago, we'll... 
I said, when I was a kid growing up and where I live, the last time before I came to America, we would only get water, running water, in our taps for like one hour a day. And uh, we, we, we had these big drums that we used to fill it up. So we always had water. We just have to make sure and fill it up when the water comes into, you know, and when the water company decided to open up the taps. So I don't know what they were doing. But there were also times where we ran out of water and there was a, a pipe down, down the way. So you got to walk like a mile, a mile, get buckets of water. I didn't have to do that a lot. I have to admit, I didn't have to do that a lot. But I did it a couple of times. That was a pain in the butt. And, and, and the part of the island I live in is the driest part, kind of like what they're talking about there. I don't think, I don't think we had any cacti growing there. But uh, where I live is a beach area, and it's kind of dry down there where I was, on my island, not on St. Vincent. Drilling was a more prevalent industry, especially on Beckway Island. And today, they still practice hunting whales in a manner regulated by the International Whaling Commission. Now we really need to hang out sometime. This is partially how the town of Barley became famous for their blackfish dish. Yeah, whales, they can be found here. And here's our animal correspondent, Caleb Gary Harlow, whatever he's calling himself these days. Off the coasts, clear waters give life to reefs teeming with small Beautiful hips, too. angelfish, barracuda, sea turtles. There's even a really cool turtle sanctuary on Big Way Island, inland though. The wildlife is mostly concentrated around birds and reptiles. And in fact, a new species of gecko with devious looking red eyes was discovered on Union Island in 2005. Otherwise, the national animal is the Amazona gulgeningen, commonly known as Gildengi. Commonly known as the Vincentian or Vinci parrot. There are only about 500 left in the wild, but fortunately, breeding programs have helped revive the little guy, and you can even see some of them at the botanical gardens in Kingstown. Thank you, Gary. So as we come to a close this segment, you know what the deal is. It's time to discuss food. In St. Vincent, the bread is fruit. the most important source of nourishment. There's even a common saying in St. Vincent, don't cut down my breadfruit tree, meaning something like, don't rip me off, man. There's also black cake and bujol, and the national dish being roasted breadfruit and fried jackfish. On top of that, they have the strongest rum in the Caribbean, sunset slash steel bottom rum at about 84.5%. It's not even allowed to be brought on planes. They literally even have signs that say it at the airport at check-in. So naturally, you guys made me drink it when I visited. The strongest in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start you with a little bit first. Oh, that's nothing. I can do that. But that's okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 wait. I have coke just in case. No, I don't need that. Uh, that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the sentence have a saying. We don't party normal. Speaking of which, that brings us to. Thank you, Noah. Come to me, Nyonya. Heimdall, open the Bifrost. Noah's such a nerd. Now keep in mind, a person from this country is called either a Vincentian or Vinci, like with a Y. Anyway, what does it mean to be a Vincentian? Vinci Y. You guys, the Vinci Jacobus, <laughs> and here are some of the things you guys said. Being a Vincentian would involve one, being able to make the best use of every situation and challenge. So some of the things that make us unique as Vincentians, we are quite friendly and hospitable people, our Creole is is quite distinct. It's, 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 it's true, it's, it's true. Me. It's too me big and small at the same time is to be diverse to be like dynamic vincentians are resourceful resilient and self-sufficient um we are the rhythms of africa melodies of europe chords of asia and the homegrown lyrics of the caribbean itself thanks guys anyway here's the demographics graph first of all the country has about 111,000 people and it is the birthplace of the garifuna people found throughout the caribbean the country is relatively more diverse than other caribbean states the majority of the population is afro-caribbean black at about two-thirds about a fifth of the country is mixed mostly between black and white. About 6% are Indian, as in from India, brought over during colonial times. About 4% are white, mostly British in descent, and many are actually transferred from Barbados and are Bajan whites. About 2% are Island Carib Kalinago, or Black Garifuna Caribs, and the remaining population is made up of other groups, such as people from the Middle East and the rest of Asia. They use the Caribbean dollar as their currency, which by the way is pegged to the US dollar at a 2.7 ratio. They use the types A and B plug outlets, sometimes British style G, and they drive on the left side of the road. That's the Eastern Caribbean currency. Those four islands, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica, and Grenada, where I'm from, 
we all use the same currency, the Eastern Caribbean currency. At least we did when I was there. Things oh, may the have official changed. language, of course, is English. However, when they talk to each other, they quickly switch it up to Vinci Creole. It's a very fluid Creole that has its own varying degrees of intensity and intelligibility depending on the context and person you speak to. For example, here's a conversation. Let me find the food. Mine tastes good again. Let me just come on. Let me taste good. What I know. Yeah, but no, it don't taste too prompt for my car. Yeah, but now, but that's enough. Uh, curry is not enough. Since when? Oh, listen. By something from curry, we have to try one more. To me, it kind of sounds like Jamaican Patois, but don't say that to them. They swear it's not the same. Totally it's different. Totally diverse, different. I understood what they said. To the native roots of the island, and especially the Garifuna. Who are the Garifuna? Well, basically, in 1675, a slave ship carrying people from the Moko group of what is now Nigeria crashed near St. Vincent. The survivors of the shipwreck, mostly Africans, eventually intermarried with the native Kalinago people, thus created the new people group known as the Garifuna. Wow. Especially with this guy who led the biggest revolt, and he's kind of like a hero of the nation. And there's a lot more that goes into the story of this nation. To expound a little bit more, here's Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Always wanted to do that. As mentioned, the Garifuna played such an important historical role that all of March is considered Heroes Month and March 14th being Heroes Day. On this day, there is a pilgrimage from Garifuna all across the Caribbean to visit the sites of their ancestors, including Balaso Island, where 5,000 were exiled to die. St. Vincent is also famous for its eco art made of sustainable products found on the island, this guy being one of the prominent figures of the movement. St. Vincent also celebrates some of their own unique holidays, like nine mornings and nine nights, which are the nine days leading up to the day they celebrate Christmas. In many of the Grenadine Islands, you can witness the wedding cake dance done by the families of the bride and groom parading to each other's homes. And speaking of homes, Vincentians are kind of known as the builders of the Caribbean. Whenever there's a construction project going on in any country in the Caribbean, it's usually safe to assume there will most likely be Vincentians involved in it somehow. And with construction, they take their own personal homes very seriously. For most Caribbean countries, cars are a status symbol, but for Vincentians, it's their house. Often every home, even small ones, are almost always built with a guest room so that they can have people over and show off. Vincentians are famous for not only having some of the most beautiful pastel colored dwellings, but also some of the most structurally integritous homes in all of the Caribbean that can withstand class 5 hurricanes with ease. Reasons being because, well, it's kind of like... I just love wood paneled bungalows with tiled rooftops. They just look so nice, don't you think? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't really have the lumber industry for that type of house, though. Then how do you make your homes? I actually do this cool thing where I infuse the volcanic soil into the concrete for stability. It works. You should try it. Hmm. No thanks. Shut up! I still prefer building with what? The majority of Incensions are Christian at around 82%. The three denominations most people claim to be a part of are Anglican, Methodist, and Roman Catholic. In Same fact, thing in you Grenada. see a street block in Kingstown with churches of all three denominations facing each other. And finally, out of all the Caribbean countries, it's often claimed that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has one of, if not the most, seafaring culture out of all the islands. Due to the geographic layout of 32 islands and keys positioned close to each other, the Vincentians have had centuries of water transport, starting with Kalinago canoes that date back over a thousand years. Wow. And the still are used today. And some of the most world-renowned scaled model boats are handmade at the famous Sargent Brothers shop. Otherwise, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has a wonderful, vibrant music scene. Ugh, and with that, I bring you Florida man, Keith. <laughs> Okay, now each Caribbean country kind of has their own specialty when it comes to the main genres. You know what I'm saying? You know, Jamaica pioneered reggae, Trinidad pioneered Calypso, and although St. Vincent didn't create it, they are a soca country and totally re-innovated the genre. In the 1980s, they started the Raga Soca movement with producer Frankie McIntosh being one of the leading figures. Raga is described as a slower paced style. Skinny fabulous. <laughs> vocals. In the 2000s though, they switched up the game and created Power Soka, which is like an aggressively rushed style of Soka with nice bass riffs, you know. But... 
So Not there like is that. the musical lifeblood of the country. They play it at all sorts of carnivals and music festivals held in the last few weeks of June and the first week of July called Vinci Moss. Uh, and everyone knows the song Turn Me On by award-winning artist Mads Art featuring Kevin Lowe. Thank you, I'm Keith, and here's my awesome bass riff that you'll never be able to play. Cause I'm Gotta so mention awesome. Beckett, bruh. Thank you, Keith. And now it's time for the incredibly the man. history segment of the episode. In the quickest way I can summarize it, Caribs of South America take over the indigenous Arawak. Christopher Columbus briefly visits. Shipwrecked Africans brought for slavery. Land on St. Vincent, intermarry with the locals, and create the new Garifuna black Caribs. French come in, create the town of Barley. Wars with British. It ends up being taken over by British. More slaves brought in. First Carib War with British. Second Carib War. Garifuna's exiled to Balasso Island. Survivors were deported to Mosquito Coast, modern day Honduras. Slavery abolished. Indians and Portuguese come in. 1902 Soufre eruption. Self rule and independence. Mustique becomes the first luxury island. Volcano erupts again in 1979, independence year. Other islands follow the pattern of becoming luxury resorts. Agriculture industry starts waning in favor of tourism. Pirates of the Caribbean filmed here, which boosts more tourism. New airport built to accommodate travel demand. And here we are today. Some of the most famous people, you guys, the Vinci Geography suggested I mention in this episode include Duval, Reverend Lansdowne Gilding, Ebenezer Theodore Joshua, Captain Hugh Molzak, Reginald Mitchell, Bridget Blucher, these athletes, Ralph E. Gonsalves, and Susan Dugan. So by now, hopefully you can kind of get the Didn't feel of Beckett. the Vinci vibe. Seafaring construction experts that might occasionally go whaling and definitely love their drinking. Okay, this is just getting weird. Seriously, I'm buying you a drink. And speaking of people that have ties to St. Vincent and the Grenadines... <laughs> St. Vincent, Uncle Vinny. When the Caribbean needs a guy, they go to Uncle Vinny. I mean, there's a reason why they're the smallest country on the UN Security Council. And that's kind of how they play their diplomatic game. For one, the US, Canada, and UK are the top visitors for tourism, which make a significant portion of their GDP. And of course, the US is the top country for imports as well. Interestingly enough though, they keep things neutral and maintain relations with Venezuela and Cuba as well. The presidents have met each other in person. They even have portraits dedicated to the friendship in their airport and many bilateral trade deals have been established, especially in the petroleum and energy sector. As members of CARICOM, they generally get along with other Caribbean countries and have family members in many of their neighboring islands as well. Most of them claim they have at least one parent or grandparent that came from another island, so the populace is very intertwined. When it comes to their best friends, however, the two I have heard most while interviewing Vincentians are Taiwan and Grenada. They are one of the few countries that recognizes Taiwan's sovereignty over the People's Republic of China, and Taiwan invests heavily in St. Vincent's infrastructure including the Orange Hill Biotechnology Center, where new crops are being grown to diversify the agriculture sector, and also the construction of the new airport, which was like a big deal. Grenada is kind of like the twin that blends in with St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as they share the last third of the Grenadine Islands with them, and people have been moving back and forth between the two countries so often, it's almost hard to tell who's from where anymore. People in the south close to Grenada even have a similar Grenadian accent. In the end, they will always be close to each other. In conclusion, St. Vincent and his 32 Grenadines Grenadine sidekicks are kind of like the guys with the hookup in the Caribbean. You need a house built? Hit up Uncle Vinny. You need a boat ride? Hit up Uncle Vinny. You need the party rummed up? Or you better hit up Uncle Vinny. Stay tuned. Samoa is coming up next. Yes! St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I ain't gonna lie, man. You wanna go to the Caribbean? Them four islands there? Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Dominica? Boom! You know, all of that Jamaica. No, go to them small islands there. It's nice. It's quiet. Peaceful, yeah, I mean, and thing you're probably not gonna get bugged a whole lot depending on where you go. You know, I ain't, I ain't knocking Jamaica on them, no knock. I'm just saying, my region of the Caribbean, <laughs> come check us out. You know, what I mean, and thing you're gonna enjoy yourself there, but anyway, keep watching, yeah, just keep watching, binge watching some of that stuff and thing, you know what I mean. And uh, I'm gonna leave a link in the description again. I'm going to leave a link in the description. The giant's telling you what he's going to do. <laughs> anyway, man, I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you all are staying safe. I hope you all are respecting each other. Listen, man, take care of each other, all right? Cool running.